Hey, y'all, this is Pastor Jones. Thank y'all for being with us. It's Monday night. And you know what Monday night is? It, is? it is time for another episode of The Relevant Church. Last week, we had such an incredible time, an incredible panel, uh, uh, consisting of some single folks here. And we're talking about being single and saved and trying to figure out how to do relationships and talk about the prospect of marriage. And, and our conversation was too good to cut it short. So guess what? They are back this week to continue that conversation. So listen, hurry up and uh, hit that share button. Uh, you got some friends out there that need to hear this subject, this content. It's going to be some good stuff, I promise you. And so thank you all for tuning in again. And hey, here we go again with our panel from last week. That's wrong in all cases. Um, but let's come back to this subject. Uh, saved, single, trying to still honor God while trying to become, um, while still wanting to be interested in, 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 in dating and ultimately marrying. No statistics say this about ladies, about your sisters. Um, only about a quarter of black women will ever be married. Twenty about twenty five, twenty six percent of black women will ever get married. Hmm. Why do y'all why what's why do y'all think that's the case? I will say um, because of what black women have experienced generationally from seeing the um, one black men are being taken out of their homes, number one. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say that I'm talking about through mass incarceration, um, through killings, um, you know, whatever, you know, something is taking the black man away from the homes. And you're seeing the black woman as having to be the strong one for the family. And you're, you're constantly seeing just women, you're seeing just women, single women raising their families, raising their children. And um, you see them do it independently, some source of independence. And it makes some black women, some from those I have spoken to, it makes to give them this sense of, you know, we take independence to the extreme. I don't need a man. Um, and so to me, that sounds like a lot of hurt to me, but for them, it looks like a badge of honor to not need a man. Um, and I think that may be one reason why some women are not getting married. Um, but I, I can't, can't speak to the, to the other ones. I agree with that point. Um, I also feel as if the eligible black men, um, people that I've run into and through conversation with some of my girlfriends, like there's this commitment phobia. Um, I don't know if that is generationally, you know, them not having a model of what marriage looks like um, or if that's just, you feel like you're just that much of a catch where you can play the field for the rest of your life until you're 70 and then you decide, oh, I want to be married. I mean, I know it sounds funny, but it's, it's a lot of yeah, people that wait until later in their years. And it's like, um, bruh, at this point, you might as well just stay single. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know why those st statistics are that low. It's sad, it's disheartening, um, but I do feel like, yes, you have those women that have that superwoman cape on, but you also have <clears throat> men who are afraid of commitment. And then also you have some, some women that just are determined they will not go outside of their race. And that percentage is pretty low for black women. Uh, only about 7% of black women will go outside their race. 15% of black men will. So it's not as huge as we try to make it out to be, uh, neither in terms of huge numbers that black men nor black women are leaving, leaving their race. Fellas, what do y'all think about that, I, that notion that only one out of four, you know, and it, even in that one out of four, it also includes some divorcees. It doesn't exclude the fact that people who have been married, or, but, but, but on average, only one out of four black women is now married. 
when up to the 60s, 1960s, uh, high 80s, even high 90s in terms of black marriages, percentage wise. What's changed? Keisha made some great points. Y'all can speak to those or y'all can bring some new ideas from your personal experience and, and our locker room conversations. Kind of piggyback off what Keisha said and April said, you know, it is you got a lot of women who've had to become strong and they get to them, they get their mindset, this mindset made up that they just have, that's what they are, they're independent, they don't need no man, they can do it on their own because they've had to do it so long on their own because black men either getting killed, killing each other, being killed by police officers or just are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, too, as men, as a man, um, I think as a man, what I've run into just for this meeting and being having a conversation with, with females, with strong minded females, and growing up in a household where my mom, my stepmom, had to be both. Not, the, not because my dad wasn't there, my dad was, that's another, he was just, he wasn't the man he should have been. He, he did things to her that I've seen as a young man and a man shouldn't do to a woman. And I think that causes women to become strong and become to a place where they, they look, they, I can do it by myself. I don't need a man because I'm tired of being beat on, I'm tired of being treated like this, I'm tired of you coming home doing this to me, treat me like this. And I've seen that as a child growing up. So I think that hurts a lot of black, for black women, they're, they're afraid to get married. Or um, the mindset is already set up that they're going to be this man gonna do them the same way the next man did because they had not healed from the past relationships they've been through. But do I'm, I want to stop you for a minute because I want you to do something. Because yes, because you because and I want this is what I want to hear from you and KP because e even in that you you you're trying to tell us what you think black women think. Yes, sir. Tell me why black men. You are a black man. Yes, sir. Why black men are avoiding marriage? I think most of them are again like. Think about what Keith said. They 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 want to be chased, or they feel that they can they can they want to wait till they're sixty and seventy years old to get married. I think a lot of black men are afraid. They're afraid of commitment. They're afraid to commit. They're afraid to be hurt. They're afraid. A lot of them, a lot of them are just afraid to. They don't know if they're gonna they're gonna meet the, if the woman gonna communicate. The woman's gonna really be who they who she says she's gonna be. I think they're just at the end of the day afraid. Afraid of commitment, afraid of actually getting in a long-term relationship, and afraid of marriage. They're actually, just afraid. I really do. I think they're afraid. They're afraid of a strong. A lot of men. Are, I've run across a lot of black men, successful black men that are, are intimidated by a strong woman. They want to be by a strong woman, a woman who has her stuff together. That intimidates them. That scares them. But I guess it goes, kind of I guess it kind of goes back to like what we said in this group. You know, if you take time out, just take time out, take a deep breath, and get to know her before you judge her get to know her before you assume that she may be the one that's for you. What you thinking? I see it like a um, a couple of things. I don't one I don't think that you know, I can only speak for myself and the people I've communicated with, so I can't make a blanket statement on all black men. But what I've noticed, so let's say you categorize men either marriage material or not marriage material. Right. And then when you look at what's marriage material, you start looking at a person. OK, do they have a job? Do they have just the basis? Do they got their stuff together? All right. So what I found a lot of time is a lot of men that are marriage material. We see there's this view of marriage that marriage is going to come at just a loss. Like there's not going to be much benefit to myself. Um, this common debate that's out there a lot is. How do you handle finances in a marriage? Mm -hmm. So you have one group of people that says, you know, if a man want a woman to do 50-50, that's not being provided. That's not a real thing. Then you got all these women out there that's like, oh, you know, he need to take care of all of it. Well, if I'm like, and, and I've been married, you know, I've been married. I've been, you know, put all the financial burden on my back. I've been divorced. All the financial burden was left on me. So when I look at stuff, I'm like, well, if I get into another marriage or, you know, other men that actually have something, it's like, how much am I losing if this don't work out? How much like what's the purpose of this if I've got to, you know, and we'll say as a side note, 
as the black community, we'll talk about systemic racism, all of this in the workplace, all the stuff like that. But then meet a black man and expect all of us to be in the 70th percentile of earning income. A very small amount of people make over $100,000. A very, very small amount of people do. But for the lifestyles that it seems like y'all want a man to uphold, that's what we got to be. If the average salary in Greenville was forty, fifty thousand dollars, something like that, if a man is making it by himself, there's no way I can pay all the bills, do all the stuff for you. And now, not that every woman wants that, but there's this, this, this message, this communicated. Like if I get with you, it's just gonna come at a loss to me. So that's the ones that are eligible. Now on the other side, and a lot of men feel this way. We'll look at women and we'll say, y'all to turn down the good brother to go for the brother that ain't got nothing to offer. So then y'all get with him. And a lot, I think a lot of this happens in youth, the early 20s, teen stuff like that. And it, it, it creates a problem down the line. And what I mean by that is, and I, you know, I don't want this to come out the wrong way. I don't want this to be shameful at all. But if you get in a relationship with the wrong person, and now you walk away from this bad relationship and you have two, three kids and you have a past that's kind of like a hot girl. Now you're older. You want a man that like has his stuff together. And it's some men that are OK with that. And not that is not that is judging a single mom or anything like that. But there's a lot of successful brothers out here that don't want to enter a relationship and be like, oh, you know, I got to be a dad. There's this thought that if you're single and you're 30, you just got to be a stepdaddy. Like, like because there's not any, you know, he's, he's being very honest, y'all. Single, you know, eligible women out here. Not, not that it's not out there, but that's like kind of the that's what we think. That's what go through our head. Because those are the conversations that I had when y'all are not in the room. He, he's being very honest and very accurate. One thing, one thing that I noticed the most, and I laugh at it working at TD Bank, there's more women out there that work out there than men. And in the morning times, you will see that constant pull-up thing. A car pulls up, man get out the passenger seat, walk over to the driver's seat, and take the car and roll off. And then you look at it, and it's like, why do y'all keep choosing brothers that's like this? and then look at brothers that got stuff together and don't have the time for it. That's, I think that plays into it as well. I got much I can say, but I want, I, I'm the, the facial expressions over here, uh, I, I, I want to hear from the panelists. And I'll, th I'll throw this out there. That's not everybody. Hey, hey, chill out with the disclaimers. It's all right. You good. <laughs> they still your friends. All right. <laughs> I have a one-liner, um, maybe a two-liner to that. Women, some women friends that I have, or women that I know, let me say that, um, they want marriage, but they don't want to be a wife. Yeah. They want marriage, they want to be a wife. And then the same thing with men. I have some men, you know, that I know who want to be married, but they don't want to be a husband. But they want the benefits that come with marriage, but I don't want the responsibility of being a wife. Right. And I don't want the responsibility of being a husband. I really don't have anything to add to any of it other than um, I like the point April made. People hype up the wedding, but they don't think about the steps that follow that. Absolutely. Um, you want to spend all of this money on a day to look good and for people to congratulate you and for you to have pictures to post on social media, but you don't think about what happens when I get into this marriage and the person that I thought they were prior to flips the script. Yeah. How do I handle that? How do I handle when we really actually get into a marriage and we haven't had a, a talk about finances? How do I handle when I get into this marriage and um, we haven't talked about how we're raising our children? Like, you don't think about those aspects prior to, so. But to your point, <laughs> Yes, every woman does not fall into that category of, you know, they got two and three kids and, you know, they been they ran through and all of this stuff. Um, I guess my question would be then, 
if you guys are having these conversations still if you come in contact with a woman that has her stuff together she don't have two three kids she think she she good what is holding you back from that commitment of marriage because on the other side of it a lot of us brothers and our youth just like i ridicule how women choose a lot of men early on especially when they start tasting success don't like a real woman. They want something that look good. They want like a trophy. Then we go out there and get our feelings hurt. And now we're more cognizant of what this relationship is really going to cost. So it's kind of like, and Ken, you said this earlier, like this, this perpetuated pain and stuff like that. If early on in life, if in our youth, and you know, everyone in hindsight 2020 made better choices early on, it'd be different. But when you look at it like, because we're all older now, we're in our 30s. And you find a lot of that. It's not most of the brothers out here that do got their stuff together and they are single. They ain't been single this whole time. They've been through some stuff. They've been burnt. We've chosen the wrong type of woman. We've lost. We've gotten hurt. Still trying to piece things back together. And there's so much hesitancy. You know, I know as a woman, you have, you know, you mentioned your hesitations. As a man, there's fear. Because when you look at it, especially when a relation, when a marriage fails, when a divorce fails, the bulk of it falls onto the man. Another statistic talks about the um, large men and women that go through divorce. Women normally recover. A large portion of men commit suicide. Or if you compare depression and suicide rates between divorced men and women, it's much higher than men. Working at Working at TD Bank, I look at uh, tax returns and credit all the time, and I see this, <laughs> how many people out there paying all this alimony, all this restitution, all this other things, and it's like they've been burned. So now that we're older, eligible, and wiser, there's also some, some fear with that. I don't want to go through this again. I, you know, got this stuff, and I don't want to, I'm hesitant to put it all on the line again because I know what it's going to cost. And I know that if this doesn't, if this fails, if it doesn't work, the odds ain't in my favor. Everything points to making sure y'all are okay, and y'all just leave men out here to drop. I work at a, I work at a homeless shelter. There's a lot more men out here. So so many men in this homeless shelter I work with, they ain't been homeless their whole life, and a lot of them have stories about failed marriages that you know cycled them into where they are now. So there's a, you know. There's some fear there. I didn't mean to laugh, but when you were sitting saying that, you know, men are left holding the bag, I was the opposite. Yeah. I was the holding the bag. I was the one that, you know, it, basically the roles were reversed. Right. So, yeah. wasn't laughing at the statistics that you were doing. Oh, no, I'm No, and, and I, I figured that's what you were doing. And, and I think a lot of what KP was describing to is also tax bracket dependent, too. You know, the, 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 the larger the income that the man is making, what you will see is the more apprehensive he becomes in getting married. And, and normally that man fits the ideal list that women will say that they have. And, and speaking of ideal list, you know, often, and, and I think you and I have talked about this, April, oftentimes I, I'll, I'll meet with, with the, the ladies in, in, in the ministry or what have you, and we're talking about relationships and what have you. And it's hard to find a woman who doesn't have a list. Like, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. And that's ain't nothing wrong with that. But here's the thing that was that has always interested me. And and this may not pertain to y'all, because y'all, y'all are y'all a little bit more astute. But one of the things I would ask would always give me these deer in headlight looks and say, okay, cool. That's what he got to bring to the table. What do you bring? And it's like, <laughs> and it's like, er! and she said, I can cook and I can screw. So let's just let's be real. Relevant church. Uh, cause, cause, because here, here's, here's the thing. And let's, let's throw it out here. I want you, I, and I'm sure y'all know this, but let's just say it for the audience, people who don't know. Uh, the older a man gets, the more successful a man gets. The less he's driven by your tail. And so if that's the, if that's the best thing you have to offer, that's already going to limit you to a certain class of men. How do we deal with that? Well, 
ladies, y'all talk to me on that subject. How how do we how how should women handle that, knowing the kind of man that you want, and knowing you, you hear you heard Kenny said, you heard KP said, you heard their fears, and, and a lot of times men don't express their fears because their fears get ridiculed. You know, I'm afraid this gonna cost, but I'm afraid you're not who you say you are. Those things are on the table. How do we address that maturely, ladies? to ease those fears? Or do you even feel like it's your responsibility to ease the man's fears? I would take some responsibility in easing the man's fears, speaking on behalf of women who are not the women who are, that you should be fearful of. So I would speak, I would take some responsibility to let, for myself and for women who are like me to say, this is why you should not fear a woman like me. When you come across women like us, this is why you should not. So I would take responsibility for me, which would speak for other women who are like me. Um, I will also add that when, when you, as a man, when you, if, if all we bring to the world, we bring more to the table, I guess, going back to what Keisha said in the beginning, I have to work on me. And Pastor did ask me that question. Because I told I had a list. It probably wasn't long, but I did have a list. And um, he asked me, what did I bring to the table? And I started naming some things. <laughs> he was like, that ain't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell the people I said that. <laughs> but I did say and it. And I did not say cook because I can't. So let me just say that. I didn't say cook. Um, but that really, it, it caused me to pause. And I had to really think about. Because let me, let me jump in because. And then I want you to finish yeah. because there was there was a great difference oh, yeah. from the list he had to bring and to the list you required to accept that, that one. That was several years ago. I know that ain't your list no more. Okay. But 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 when we look back at that conversation, your list were, were very common things mm -hmm. where we're over here. You were trying to get the one percent of the brothers. So that was a huge departure. There was there was there was no matching. So, so my, my fear for you and my fear for those that are watching is the lack of reciprocity in the relationship. He's going to be giving more. And when there's when 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 whenever, whether it be like Keisha said in her situation, wherever somebody's giving more than they're getting, that 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 departure is a is a is a Petri dish for bitterness and resentment. You know, because you can go for it for a little while because you're telling yourself, I'm just loving them. I'm just loving her. But after a while, your tank is getting depleted because. Love is not enough. It, it ain't. It's not. It's not. I, there's some it's needs have to be met. But but I'm sorry. Talk talk, talk no, to the people. Okay. I, I would, but just even just to twist what you just said. So as a woman, I've just never heard a man say what he really wants from a woman. Mm, that's Yeah. So a woman is always very vocal to say what she needs. And guess what? Most men will meet her at that place. Okay, you need a provider? Okay, I'll be a provider. Okay, you need this? I'll do that. Men, like what men are pursuing, they become impressive and they start to do all these things for you. So guess what? Every relationship, men are doing the same thing. So it's become expected. Yeah. But for men, men do not vocalize what they want from their woman. That is or a great... Or they lead with their lead with their hind, you know, their hind parts. Yeah. But you, 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 you just nailed it because because you because if 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 we would be honest with y'all. We don't feel men don't really feel the luxury of expressing need. It, 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 it ain't been something, you know, we we've been raised, provide, take care, make sure she's good. Happy, happy wife, happy life, all those things. But he asked, but, but, but what you need, bro? And it's, and, and it's a disturbing feeling because you like. Something that me and Kenny was talking about before y'all had showed up was like, and I think this isn't just on the male's gender. What I needed when I was 20 ain't what I need now that I'm 30. And it's, and it, it, it's even a learning process coming to learn what it is that I need, learning what it is that I want how it is I respond to things. So, but I, I certainly agree because I can't think with what you said because I can't think of too many relationships I've ever been in where I've verbally expressed, this is what I need from you. 
you know, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to, you know, in this situation, respond this way. Now, I will say there's a, a small percentage of hot girls out there. You start telling them what you need. I ain't serving no man. I ain't doing this. And that attitude pop up. But outside of that, I say most of the time, I don't think us men really express yeah. this is what I need. Tina, how close am I to an hour and a half? About 20? Okay. I think um, as a man, too, I think. Pull your mic up, can I I think as a man, as a man myself, communication is the biggest thing. Absolutely. I mean, if I was to say what I wanted from what I wanted a woman, it'd be four things. I want her to be my best friend. I want her to communicate with me. I want us to have trust and have patience. The rest, as you communicate, you're going to find that out as you grow. But those four things in a female, and out of them four, the biggest one is communication. If we can't talk, we don't have nothing. You don't know me, I don't know you. And and it, and it gets to a place, I think, as men, for men, men who, the percentage of men who actually do communicate, who do attempt to talk to women and don't get no feedback, don't get nothing back, that's a, that's a fear of ours. Because we can't, I've learned, I can't make a woman talk to me I can't make her say what, need, what I need her to say. I can't do that. All I can do is be me and pray that she communicates back to me the way she feels she needs to communicate, communicate back to me. But I think that's a big, 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 big thing is communication mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Well, what I guess for me, what I find is that the communication from the men when you do communicate is superficial. Everything is on the surface. You have some matters of the heart that are going on. That, uh, so you, you have some things that you really desire to see from your woman, but the things that you communicate are, are still surface. So mm -hmm. meanwhile, in my mind, because of what you said, I'm ticking off what you said. I, I am doing this. You know, I can rattle off the things that I am doing. But it's really deeper than that. Because even when I meet that need that you said, it's still something deeper that's causing you to be dissatisfied in the relationship. Because you're not communicating the real needs. You're communicating what you think I might be able to handle. That and says a lot. That comes from That's good. people don't know themselves well enough to know what they want in order to communicate it properly. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when Pastor talked about the whole list thing, my ex-husband was my list guy. Everything I had on my list, check, 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 check. But when it came down to communication, um, when it came down to substance, once we got into it, None of that was there. When it came down to being compassionate and um, being able to verbalize what he needed and what he wanted, he wasn't able to. And so that came from one, a lack of getting what you needed when you were older because you didn't have it when you were younger. Yes. I can't yeah. blame yes. on how this is how I was raised. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like once you reach a certain level of adulthood, you have to go and find the things that you need in order to um, be well-rounded, to be a mentally, emotionally mature adult. Um, but communication is key for all of it. I think one of the things that 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 we're learning, and I know y'all hear me stress it here, is is the whole notion of of understanding your needs. And it's it's not intuitive as we like to think it is. Uh, there's not a certain age where it becomes clear. It has to be searched out. And and searching out internal things has not been an often talked about subject, especially especially for men. Uh, mm -hmm. Ladies, y'all know, you guys are allowed to be more emotional. You're expected to be emotional. And you know, like you've heard me say, you know, we've been raised, you know, with, uh, with well intentions that big boys don't cry. Uh, big boys don't express their feelings. So if I don't express it, I can't be in tune with it. And so if I can't, if I, if I can't express it at eight, it doesn't mean I'm automatic and know how to express it at 48. All I know is that I'm missing something, so I'm going to be mad at you. And I'm going to go chase something that I do know I like. 
and then discover it doesn't fill the void either. And that's not a gender thing. That happens on both sides of the equation. And so um, I just think that, that we, one of the things we have to do is, is be more committed to doing inner work as an individual. But here's something I want to challenge us with. I want to challenge y'all with two ladies. Because I thought about this as I was listening to you, April, uh, right before Keisha was talking. Um, we have to, to you know, everybody in, corp- in corporate America now talks about safe spaces. You know, give, give your employees safe spaces so they can express themselves. I think we have to be uh, intentional about that in our relationships. And we can call it communication, you know, and I, and I like what they call it, that, that more people are, are not are no longer calling it safe spaces. They're calling it brave spaces uh, because it requires some courage. We have to learn how to be intentional with creating an environment where, you know, male or female, that your vulnerability doesn't lower your value. That is a huge fear for men. That if, if, if we show you our vulnerabilities, our weaknesses, because as KP said, we've been, a lot of times we've been in a situation where that's been exploited. Uh, and that's been brought back up. Our vulnerability, and ladies, y'all, y'all have to speak for yourselves on this one because I don't know that side. Uh, our vulnerability sometimes has been weaponized against us. And, and, and if you make a man feel like he's not a man, Sometimes that pendulum will swing back too far, you know, where he, he, he's too aggressive now. He's too hard now. He ain't going to never let you see him cry again. He ain't going to never let you see this, that, or the other. And now that, 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 that hard thing that you told him you wanted him to be, he, he that in the bedroom. He's that when you're going through. He's that when you need somebody to talk to because he can't turn it off. And so what we need to be able to do as part of our list is to say, I want to be safe for you. I want to be safe for you. Be you. Because we talk about be your whole entire self. Uh, Do we really mean that? Because it's cute to say. Be your authentic self. It's cute to say. But, but, But when it makes a demand of you, are we willing to handle that? Are we willing to offer that? Are we willing to stand in that with somebody? Because I would venture to say, if you give that to somebody, that's what real love feels like. I can come through a low moment with you and still feel like my stock didn't deplete. I can come through a low moment with you and you still respect my voice, my thoughts, my leadership. That's both ways now. Because y'all know I teach leadership is both ways. It ain't just a man and a woman. We submit one unto another. We discover the strengths that you got here. You take care of that. If you better at the finances, here's the checkbook, babe. I don't feel like I'm less than a man. If I'm better at cleaning than you and I'm a dude, just get out the way on Saturdays, girl, because the house gonna smell like pine salt and bleach. And we're going to get this thing together because that's how I was raised. But he, but he doesn't lose his manhood. But it goes back to what you said, Keisha. If, if we can't talk, if we can't drop the performance, when will we let the curtain close, the actors go home, and here's me. Mm-hmm. Here's me. Here's all of me. And some good stuff. There's some traumatized stuff. I'm going to discover some broken stuff in me because I'm with you that I didn't even know was broke. I didn't even know I had that issue because nobody, nobody ever loved me like this. Nobody ever spent this much time with me. No, nobody ever, right. nobody ever gave me a chance to talk. Nobody asked me. Right. Everybody just ran from it. Somebody cared enough to go like, hey, hey, listen, why you do this every time this happens? Man, but being, but being in a space where you are where you feel safe and comfortable enough to actually discuss why you do what you do when certain things happen. Because for me personally, once I got to that point where I was like, okay, either this is going to end in divorce or we're going to work this thing out. 
when we got to a space of let's start dealing with the deeper issue, he couldn't show up mm. down the wall of let me work through it and get past it. Mm. Men have a hard time, some men, not all, some men have a hard time with, even if I sit and ask you, well, why do you do what you do? And even if I'm doing it in a loving way, it's, I'm not coming at you aggressive or anything, but ask me, well, why do you do what you do when X, Y, Z happens? And you can't properly communicate it, well, we have an issue. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that, because let, let me... Let, let me close out this thing with a little more pastoral stuff, because because let because that is very true. But but here's my challenge again to everybody. When, when you become aware of something and you're in relationship with it, that awareness ought to lead to some sense of responsibility. And what I mean by that, and I'm not, let's use the example you said. So you say, you know, you ask him the question of the man and he doesn't know how to communicate. Here's what I want to challenge us with, because I, ladies, I'm sure y'all will want this too. You've now stumbled across a place that's difficult for me. Help me through it. Because I think what, what's going what's to have to happen is that when you see my struggle, the way that you distinguish yourself from everybody else in the world, because nobody walked into my struggle ever. If you walk into my struggle, say, I know this is, I know this is, I see this is hard for you. What, what do we got to do to help you feel more comfortable talking about this? That feels like love. That is, that should be symptomatic of commitment. That I see your struggle and I see you don't want to talk. But we're going to talk, maybe not tonight, but I need you to know I ain't going nowhere. And I know we need to work through this. Because here's the thing that, that I wrote now that I think we got to get, y'all, is that when you work that hard to create safe space, you work that hard to say, I see you, because seeing me is intimacy. I see you. I see where the pain is. I see where it's hurting. Here's the thing we got to get to. That's just the beginning. We have to understand that even though I see you, it is also creating an expectation of change. That has to change. If we're going to get from here, everybody got to be committed that when your struggle, your issue is unearthed, there has to be a commitment because of the love we have for each other that we got to go at this head on. And notice I said that we, we, and, and, and if you pull back and act like, well, it's just me. Well, this is my issue. I got, it's a wrap because re, re, relationship has taken, you know, especially in, in the marital union, the way that it works is that the two become one. Your issue ain't your issue no more. Your issue is our issue. And so there has to be a team effort in terms of how do we get to the root cause? How do we get to a place of healing? And then can you imagine the depth of the bond? Because nobody went into this dark place before. This is the dark place I visited all by myself. Somebody actually going to hold my hand and walk in this dark place with me and help me find the light switch. Don't nobody compare to you no more. Even when we fall out, I remember, ain't nobody been in them crevices. <laughs> and that make you want to fight. But the problem is, if, if, if we're not willing to turn the knob of that door and go into them dark places together, we reduce this thing to something very common, something very replaceable. And so you go on to the next, and the next, and the next, with no healing. Guys, I thank y'all for being with me tonight. I think we had some fun. We laughed. We touched on some serious stuff. We touched on, I can tell by our expression, I can tell by my own feelings over here. We picked at some scabs. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. We feel a little challenged. We feel a little vulnerable, a little naked, a little all of this stuff. You know what we feel? We feel alive. 
That's that that thing you feel sums up. Call it life. I feel alive. I feel beautifully human. Trying to figure out this 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 thing called life. Just trying to figure it out and fumbling. And sometimes I do good. Sometimes I do bad. I'm just hoping my pluses add up more than my negatives. But even in my neck, well, in my pluses, I'm a negative. I'm still taking notes because I want more pluses and I want to fix the negatives. We hope that y'all who are watching us tonight, these la these two nights, this was so good. We had to do this for you two nights. Um, we hope it bless you. But we know we didn't give you all the answers. But here's what we hope. We hope we gave you a little courage to have some needed conversation. There are some needful conversations that need to take place. One thing I've learned and in, 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 in what we're trying to, to, to do in our ministry, and we're not the only ones that's doing it, but I can only speak for the house that we're in. We're trying to really drive home this whole idea that the thing that we have to excel at the most, it's not building businesses, not building ministries, it's not accumulating wealth, all those things we have to do as a part of life. The most important thing that we have to learn how to do is relationships. Relationship. Relationships determine the trajectory of your life. The well, the ascension or the descension of your life. Relationships determine the quality of your life. Relationships <laughs> determine the quality of your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And when I say relationship, that is not excluding God because He tells us we got to love Him first. That's a relationship. Then he tells us the next thing we got to do is learn to love ourselves, which means we got to do all this introspective work. Relate, loving yourself ain't just pedicure, manicures, vacations, all that. Cool. That's cool. Fix the outside. Do what you got to do. But man, it's just a shame to put on a new coat of paint on the house when the studs are falling apart underneath. You got to go in here and do this inner work. Because this pretty thing going to collapse if you don't do the inner work. So when you finally learn how to love yourself, love is about correction. I got to fix me. And then as I build me up, then I can go love my neighbor, those in close proximity to me, because I got something to give. I can't give you nothing that I don't have in me in the first place. Then I can do this. It don't make sense to gain the whole wide world and lose your soul, your mind, your, lose your inner self. What's the point of having it? Ain't nothing like succeeding with somebody beside you that love you or a group of people that you know you got good relationship with. Ain't nothing like winning and winning with people. <laughs> Relationships. These beautiful people here tonight, they save, they're single, they're growing, they're loving on God, loving on themselves, and trying to be examples unto you. We hope we did a good job tonight. Hope you come back and see us next Monday and the next and the next. <laughs> All right, till next time, much love.